So today happens to, to be a Monday, and so by my own uh, mandate, I must review a book. The book I'm going to review today is called The Very Ordered Existence of Merrily Marvelous. This book is by Suzanne Crowley, or Crowley, I'm not sure how to pronounce her name exactly. I picked it out because I liked the title. The book was not at all what I was expecting it to be. I mean, it wasn't even close to what I was expecting it to be. The story is told from the point of view of Merrily in first person, and the first thing that I really liked about this book when I started reading it is that when you read it, you really get a sense for that this is a person actually sitting down and telling you a story. Now, it's never explicitly stated anywhere in the book, but there are plenty of clues to tell us that she probably has a high-functioning form of autism. Merrily lives her life in a very ordered way, the very ordered existence of Merrily Marvelous. She, call, she calls it this, her very ordered existence, her B-O-E. Everything is very very orderly and laid out and scheduled, and if she doesn't follow this schedule rigorously, then she feels all out of sorts. Her world is thrown completely upside down by Biswick. Biswick, like Merrily, has a developmental disorder. Uh, they actually do state what his disorder is, but I won't tell you what it is. I'll let you read the book on your own. As a result of Biswick's disorder, he is developmentally slow. And so we have very ordered Merrily and extremely unordered Biswick meeting. And not only are these two kids absolutely wrong for each other, they are also absolutely wrong for their surroundings. Because both Merrily and Biswick live in a very small, conservative, backwards town in Texas. And so they live with people who just can't get next to anything that's different. There are a lot of people who are just horrible to both Merrily and Biswick. They're horrible to Merrily because she's just weird and she does, she picks up trash and she's really obsessed with dragons. That's her obsession. She loves dragons and she draws dragons all the time and she's really interested in them. And of course Biswick is funny looking and he's not very bright and he's always referred to as the retarded boy. And so one of the major themes of uh, of this book is the idea that everybody sees the world a little bit differently. Merrily also has a very dim and cynical view of the world, and she has difficulty seeing that other people have different views of the world, have other ways of looking at things. Biswick, for example, in complete contrast to Merrily, has a very optimistic and, and rosy view of the world, and so do uh, a couple of other characters around around her. And she just can't understand that. She can't understand how they can believe these things that are completely irrational and they completely go against everything in her very ordered existence. The story really chronicles Merrily's growing up in a sense. People who are autistic or people who are retarded or people who have any sort of, uh, of disorder still continue to develop and grow and learn just like everybody else, and Merrily does that throughout the course of the novel. It's really an incredibly, incredibly well-written and well-told story, and I really enjoyed reading it. And on that note, I'll see you next time.